All right. So my name is Amy Blankenship. For those out there that I have not met yet, um, welcome and Shabbat Shalom. We are going to cover um, Shemini. I'm not a Hebrew scholar, so I'm hoping that's right. It means eighth. That's the part you need to know. Um, It covers Numbers. Excuse me, I'm in Numbers right now. It covers Leviticus chapter 9 through chapter 11. So my prayer for you all today, wherever you are, is that you have moments today at the very least where you are experiencing whatever it is that God wants to give you today. We, this is an interesting portion, it's going to make me cry, so hang on. We like to say Shabbat Shalom, and we like to um, assume that everybody is experiencing the peace of the Sabbath because we have set this day aside and we're resting in our homes or whatever a Sabbath looks like to you. But let me tell you what God showed me this week. So beginning in chapter 9, it came to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. Now this is the eighth day because for the past seven days, Moses has had Aaron um, and his sons in the tabernacle consecrated, set apart from everybody else um, so that they're dealing with whatever they got to deal with so that they can be focused completely on God um, when it's their time to step in. So this is the eighth day. Aaron's getting ready to come out of the tabernacle and step into his role as high priest. And because I only have 10 minutes, we're going to, well, this is, it's important that you read the whole thing. We're going to skip to the part that I want to talk about. (laughs) When, um, so Moses goes through, this is what you need to do. And you need to bring your own offering first um, and then the people's offering. But here in verse six, then Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded you to do. And the glory of the Lord will appear to you. This was going in another direction when I left the house this morning, but this is what he's been talking to me about for the last 20 minutes. So I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but I understand that this phrase, the glory of the Lord will appear to you, in Hebrew, in the tense that it's in, it says that he's coming. There's not a do your checklist, and if you do it right, he'll show up. Or if he has time today, he'll drop in on you. This is a, the Lord is coming. So you need to do whatever it is that you're supposed to do. Because you need to be prepared for him coming. It's not, it's not the checklist so that he'll come. It's you do it because he is coming. So the question he asked me was, are you prepared to receive me today? And my immediate response is, of course I am, because when would I not want to be in the presence of the Lord? But am I prepared to receive him? Have I done what he has asked me to do? If I have set apart everything else from the week and just kept my Sabbath holy so that he can enter in and I can be with him? Or have I let other things creep in? Am I dependent on his grace, which is abundant. (laughs) But am I counting on his grace because I didn't get stuff done that I should have done? Which takes us to the next part. Um, So they've done the offerings, and in verse 22 it says, Aaron lifted his hand toward the people, blessed them, and came down from the offering, came down from offering the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of meeting and came out and blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. And fire came out from the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar, and when all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. So we have this glorious moment when their hearts are prepared, they've entered into his presence, God has come down, it's this amazing moment, and the very next thing that happens is that Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, 
take their censers and offer profane fire before the Lord, and he burns them up. So when I was studying this last night, God said, how do you feel about that? (laughs) And I ask my family this question a lot, so this wasn't unusual for me, but I had to stop and think about it. And my emotional response to this was, if I was Aaron, I would feel guilty. Because if I had trained my children the way I should have, then they wouldn't have done this. And I'm not saying that that's what happened. I'm saying this was my emotional response. This was filtered through my baggage. So I feel guilty because his children, he didn't train his children like he should have. And then the next feeling I have is, well, this isn't fair because his heart has just been broken. He's just watched his two sons die. He's probably feeling guilty about it, and he can't even go mourn them. And so my heart was just broken in that moment. And God said, (laughs) this next question to me was, what's wrong with your perception of this? Well, okay, there's probably a ton of things wrong with my perception of this, but... (laughs) I had taken my eyes off of God, off of why why he asked Aaron to hold his peace at this time, why he needed Aaron not to leave the tabernacle. Because this story isn't about me, and it's not about Aaron. It's about God. And it says in verse chapter 10, verse 3, um, the Lord spoke to, or Moses spoke to Aaron. And this is what the Lord spoke, saying, By those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy, and before all the people, I must be glorified. So the whole point of this was, when God asked me what my perception of it was and why that was wrong, and what my emotional response to this was, what I realized was that because I looked at this as this wasn't fair to Aaron and I had judged Aaron for not training his sons. That shows me what I have in my heart that comes between God and I. Because I have put my place, myself in the place of God as judge of Aaron. And I have said that Aaron should be guilty, even though these, even though these were adult sons, even though they're responsible for their own actions. I had set myself as judge over Aaron. Um, but also, I, count, I judged God as being unfair in this situation. So I can reason out. I can look at this. I can reason out why this is about God and it's not about Aaron. And, and I can walk through all of that in a logical manner. But what do I do with those emotions, that emotional response that I have had to this? Because if I just tuck it away and tamp it down, eventually it's going to come back out. And probably not in a good way, but at the very least, what it's going to do is blur my perception of God. And it's going to keep me, I'm going to be holding back from him. So we took these emotions out. Okay, God, this is what I felt. And I recognize that I was wrong, but I need to tell you that this was my response to you. And you know what? God is big enough to handle that. And he's true enough and holy enough to correct my perception and to allow me to clean that emotion out of my heart and open up that gateway for him that I had blocked. But if I hadn't asked myself the question, how do I feel about this? What's my emotional response? I would have read this. I would have acknowledged that if you come before the Lord, you need to do it as holy. He needs to be regarded as holy. I'd have stated all of that, and I would have never addressed what I was holding between he and I. So to go back to the first thing I said about, um, are you ready for God? Have you done everything you need to do for God to meet with you today because he's coming? If I have followed my checklist for Shabbat, if I have prepared everything and my house is clean and my dishes are done and my food is prepared, but my heart still has something against him, then what I receive from God today is not going to be the fullness of what he wants for me. It's going to be limited to what I will allow in. So my prayer for you today 
is that you'll check that emotional response to God. You'll ask him to show you what you have set between him and you, and you'll allow him to clean it out so that you can receive fully what it is that he has for you. So go read the whole Torah portion if you haven't already. There's a whole bunch more stuff in there. Um, This is my chance to show you what God has shown me, and that's the tip of the iceberg, but I hope it blesses someone today. Thank you.